Well, um, businesses, um, that's a very good question. Um, businesses need to uh, work in a, in a world where everybody wins. Uh, I was talking to, I'm, talk, I'm working with uh, two international coffee um, companies, and they need to understand for them, for them to continue to have coffee uh, to sell, they need to make sure that young farmers want to be coffee growers. What we are seeing in a lot of places of coffee production is that many young people do not want to be like their parents. So who's going to pick the coffee in the future? We either have to mechanize the whole harvesting and taking care of the coffee plantations, or we need to create incentives uh, for coffee growers. What we are seeing, and this is a big revelation that we are coming, what we are seeing is that mechanisms, for example, like fair trade, the only thing that they guarantee is fair trade. But fair trade coffee is does not mean no poverty coffee. Here in Paraguay, we know a sugarcane cooperative that gets a premium price for their sugar. Um, but they are all poor. So this is one of the reasons why the government of Ecuador has approached us to move further, deeper, and beyond fair trade uh, coffee or fair trade cocoa or fair trade banana to go to no poverty banana, for example. This is a beautiful uh, opportunity to really understand what it means to be a not poor banana farm. And uh, this, uh, this applies to everything in the fair trade movement. So we recognize that we are standing on the shoulder of giants, uh, of all the people that have come before us, but we would like to offer uh, an additional brick in this building that we are all concerned